Good morning. Welcome uh, and happy holiday, happy 4th of July. Uh, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Amen. Please turn to hymn number 331 in your hymnals, God of the Ages. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome to our church today. There's a few announcements. We still have two security openings for fleas are Thursday, July 13th, Monday, July 17th, from 7.30 to midnight, and you can see Dave vote. And there's going to be a fleas are meeting in the fireside room. 10.45 this morning, and Carolyn wanted to remind you that we name tags. It's so nice to have name tags so we know everybody. And you can either contact Carolyn, you can sign up in the Narthex, or you can go to Laser Innovations. Good morning. I have a, a good news from the Pastoral Nominating Committee. As, as you know, we have a, a, a nominee who's been invited to be our next pastor. And last uh, Monday, the 26th, we 
uh, negotiated the terms of the contract successfully uh, with the, uh, the nominee, which is great. And ne the next step is for the uh, presbytery to approve those terms, so that's being worked on right now. And then after that, uh, the nominee is going to come and preach, and then we'll have a congregational meeting where you'll all get a chance to vote uh, to uh, elect this uh, nominee as our new pastor. And that meeting is going to be August 13th, so mark your calendars. Thank you. Vic Wimay's uh, memorial service for Joan will be here in the church on um, uh, July the 8th. That's a week from yesterday. That's this coming Saturday. Did I say that right? It's coming up Saturday. Be here. Um, we're going to have, uh, they are going to have, the family will have a uh, meeting time from uh, 10 to 11, a service from 11 to 12, and then a light luncheon in the fellowship hall. So you're all invited, of course. And we do have communion today, and communion is open to everybody who believes in Jesus. So we like to recognize visitors. So if anybody is comfortable, they want to stand up. Give us your name and where you're from, from over here. From here. Welcome. Yeah. And hope I've got some family that came in. This is uh, my sister-in-law and niece, Holly, Haley, and Holly's dad, Ralph, from Elmhurst and Chicago. Oh, Brooke, Elmhurst and Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Anybody else over here? Anybody here? How about over here? No? Don't forget, to, I'm sorry. Welcome. We have a, a friendship of ritual pad if you'd like to sign it and pass it to the next person and enjoy. I guess that I had such a good time welcoming Bob and Judy friends last week that I, I decided to do it again. And uh, I don't think they're here, but they're, re they're really welcome. You're really welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. All right, good. Thanks. All right, time for the young church. Where is the young church? Now, there's some young church people out there, so... Yeah, here's one. All right, all right, all right. Now we're getting some action. See, you led them. All right. You can sit right here. Good. Good. Hi. Come on. Yeah. You sit here. Hey, just I want to check and make sure nobody's escaping here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, uh, I just wanted to say something. Today we are doing something that's very important in a church. Uh, what we're going to do today is welcome a new elder, a new member of our session. And so I, I, I uh, am going to talk a bit about that in, uh, in the sermon in a minute. But I wanted to remind you, because you might get confused. You might say, well, an elder. What's an elder? Is that a really old person? Well, he's a little old. He's a little old. But that's not what elder means in this case. You remember a couple weeks ago, you were here, I think, we talked about elders being an older person and how the Bible talked about older people. 
But in this case, an elder is not necessarily a real old person, but an elder is someone who's wise and smart. And we use elder that way. We say, this is a person who's not just wise and smart, but works to hear the voice of God in what he or she does in terms of leadership of our church. So that's what uh, this new person has been chosen to do, to be a good, wise leader who listens for the voice of God. And we call that an elder, not just an old person, but a wise person. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the young church. Thank you for these young people here. We ask that you will be with them and guide them and help them grow. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's first lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. Listen now to the words of Paul. Church helpers must also have a good character and be sincere. They must not drink too much wine or be greedy for money. They should hold to the revered truth of the faith with a clear conscience. They should be tested first, and then if they pass the test, they are to serve. Their wives also must be of good character and must not gossip. They must be sober and honest in everything. A church helper must have only one wife and be able to manage his children and family well. Those helpers who do their work well win for themselves a good standing and are able to speak boldly about their faith in Christ Jesus. Our second lesson is from Romans chapter, 13, or chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And again, the words of Paul. So then, my brothers, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. And because of God's gracious gift to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you should. Instead, be modest in your thinking and judge yourself according to the amount of faith that God has given you. We have many parts in the one body, and all these parts have different functions. In the same way, though we are many, we are one body in union with Christ, and we are all joined to each other as different parts of one body. So we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith that we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. If it is to teach, we should teach. If it is to encourage others, we should do so. Whoever shares with others should do it generously. Whoever has authority should work hard. Whoever shows kindness to others should do it cheerfully. Here in today's readings, may God grant us understanding. Would you pray with me the prayer of confession? Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be. 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Rest assured this morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, that because of what God has done through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven now and forever. Amen. It's time to raise uh, our needs and concerns and our blessings and joys to God in prayer. So if you would like to uh, verbalize some before the congregation, that would be great. So are there any prayer requests over in that section there? Yes, Angie. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, for our concert. concert. Oh, Hunter. Okay, Hunter. Thank you. Sorry. Good. Yes, Joan. Okay, thank you. In this section, any prayers? Yes. Okay, for Joe Sanks. Yes. Linda. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Hi, Denise. Okay. Okay. Can anybody top that? We <laughs> Any others? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Kate. Oh. For Vic, we met and his family. Okay. Vic. Any others? Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we praise you this morning for being our Lord and Savior through your Son, Jesus Christ. You alone are our heart's desire this morning. We worship you above all else in our world. Needs surround us. We have heard a few, but there are many, many more. Hear our prayers this morning. Hear our spoken and unspoken words and answer our prayers. Address our needs as your wisdom dictates. For your care and love and concern, we are grateful. And we pray together the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand, please, if you're able, and sing hymn number 340, This Is My Song.
Please be seated. I'm reading from uh, Paul's letter to Titus. Um, the first chapter, verses 6 through 9. The word of the Lord. An elder must be without fault. He must have only one wife, and his children must be believers and not have the reputation of being wild or disobedient. <laughs> For since a church leader is in charge of God's work, he should be without fault. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for money. He must be responsible, hospitable, and love what is good. He must be self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the message which can be trusted and which agrees with the doctrine. In this way, he will be able to encourage others with the true teaching and also to show the error of those who are opposed to it. The word of the Lord. Now, as part of our, our vetting of Bob Dannenberg, I did check with his wife as to whether he's perfect or not. <laughs> and uh, he isn't. <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we'll see what we can make of that scripture passage. I thought that we would spend some time this morning, I, I, I put off our uh, Revelation sermon another week, since this is an important thing. Appointing a new session member is an important thing for our church. And I wanted to remind you of some things regarding the leadership of our church that you probably already know, but maybe it's helpful to hear them, uh, hear it again once uh, in a while. As you know, everyone who is baptized, baptized in this church, is a member of this church, whether it's a, a little baby or a teenager who didn't get the chance to get baptized, or an adult. Uh, when they are baptized in the church, they become members, and they are expected then, you are expected, those of you who are members, to serve to do some kind of ministry that contributes to the body of Christ. And different churches have different categories of what needs to be done in a church, what ministries there are to do. And not all churches are the same on many of those uh, ministries. Many of the things that need to be done in a church are unique to that church. Uh, I'll guarantee you no one else has a Fleazar chairman <laughs> uh, who does the Fleazar work. And we do that, and we have uh, a, a great uh, volunteer who does that. Um, they do that uh, because of, um, of their gifts. And so that's the general category is that everyone serves somehow, but how you serve is uh, dependent on a couple of different things. One of them is what gifts you have. People have different gifts and are good at different things, and so usually you try and match a person's gifts with the jobs that need to be done in the church, and where those come together, you can be grateful and uh, particularly in a church like this, uh, and when that match is made, people tend to uh, agree to serve and do, and serve that way. But all Presbyterian uh, uh, congregations, PCUSA congregations, have three positions in the church that they consider essential, that it is uh, almost impossible to have a church without three what they call, what we call, ordered ministries. Three ordered ministries. And the three ordered ministries are deacons 
and ruling elders and teaching elders. And I'm going to talk about each of those in a minute, but let me talk about the word ordered uh, uh, for a minute. What does it mean to say three ordered ministries in, in the church? Um, it, it's pretty simple, really. It means that these are three things that help keep order. These are the three things that help us uh, manage our finances, uh, take care of people who need help, uh, preach and teach the word of uh, the Lord, the Bible. These things are essential to a church, and if you don't have those, you really don't have a Christian uh, church. And so we Presbyterians call those ordered uh, ministries. And uh, in the Book of Order, our little book that tells us how to do things, each of those are, uh, are defined. Um, I'm going to read them to you. It's only two minutes after ten. <laughs> you know, I'm really cautious about this. Uh, the three ordered ministries are deacons, ruling elders, and minister of word and sacrament. Here's what the book of order says deacons do. The ministry of deacon as set forth in scripture is one of compassion, witness, and service, sharing in the redeeming love of Jesus Christ for the poor, the hungry, the sick, the lost, the friendless, the oppressed, those burdened by unjust policies or structures, or anyone in distress. Persons of spiritual character, honest repute, exemplary lives, brotherly and sisterly love, sincere compassion, and sound judgment should be chosen for this ministry. If you have to, uh, the Book of Order kind of boils all that down to a three-word phrase and says that a deacon is someone who shows compassion and service. So those two words are especially appropriate to deacons. Of course, we hope that you all are compassionate, and you all are ready and willing to serve. And I would say that I, I think that you are. But this is the special province of our deacons. Ruling elders, two different kinds of elders, ruling elders and teaching elders, uh, ruling elders, which is what we are considering Bob for this morning. As there were in the Old Testament times elders for the government of the people, so the New Testament church provided persons with particular gifts to share in discernment of God's spirit and the governance of God's people. Accordingly, congregations should elect persons of wisdom and maturity of faith having demonstrated skills in leadership and being compassionate in spirit. Ruling elders are so named not because they lord it over the congregation, but because they are chosen by the congregation to discern and measure its fidelity to the word of God and to strengthen and nurture its faith and life. So if we had to boil that down to two words, the Book of Order says the two words are discernment and governance, a willingness to lead and a certain amount of knowledge about governing an organization uh, as complex as uh, this church would be. And then, drum roll, the uh, third essential ministry is the teaching elder which is also called the minister of the word and sacrament. And churches have usually have, churches this size usually have one uh, uh, a teaching elder, one minister, but sometimes as churches get bigger, they require bigger uh, staff. The, bo uh, uh, the Book of Order says this about ministers of word and sacrament. Ministers of word and sacrament shall in all things be committed to teaching the faith in word and deed and equipping the saints for the work of ministry. They may serve in a wide variety of ministries as authorized by the presbytery. 
where they serve as preachers and teachers of the word, they shall teach and preach the faith of the church so that the people are shaped by the pattern of the gospel and strengthened for witness and service. And if you had to boil that job, the teaching elder job, down to two words, it would be teaching and pastoral care. And uh, so that, that, that is what the, order, uh, the uh, ordered ministries of our church are, and it's what uh, we're considering uh, today in uh, what will follow after the sermon. These are not uh, uh, appointments that are taken lightly. We don't uh, just appoint people who will say yes. Uh, we appoint people that we think are gifted for this and believe they are gifted uh, for this. And uh, the session uh, spends a, a, a good bit of time uh, thinking and praying about who uh, should uh, be in these roles. Once the session uh, has uh, received a name and processed a name and approved a name, which we have done, uh, that person is brought before the congregation and given a service uh, of either ordination or installation. Elders, uh, ruling elders and teaching elders are, are, are both ordained, which is a, an important function. However, if someone has served in this kind of a role in the past, in this church or in another church, then they don't need to be ordained. They are simply installed. Every bit is important, but it's a little different service. And that is what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to install Bob Dannenberg as a ruling elder of Manitowish Waters Community Presbyterian uh, Church. Uh, Bob has served in a similar role in uh, churches that uh, they have attended previously, so he uh, is uh, well-versed in what is required, and uh, in our judgment, uh, has all the gifts and graces needed to do the job. He has been gracious enough to accept our nomination for this. And all that's left in this service of installation is for me to call him forward, and then we will ask him. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great phrase the Book of Order uses, the constitutionally ordained questions of the church. These aren't just regular questions. <laughs> Where are you going for lunch? <laughs> no. These are constitutionally ordained questions, so you better be ready, uh, Bob. I'm going to ask Bob to come up. Would you please welcome him, please? Let's go over here. I had to get my constitutionally ordained questions. <laughs> Bob Dannenberg, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, 
and work for the reconciliation of the world. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Yes. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. And will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Now, you all have two constitutional questions also. If you can turn around, Bob, and we will face the congregation together and ask them these two questions. Do we, the members of the church, accept Bob Dannenberg as a ruling elder chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? Do we agree to pray for him, to encourage him, to respect his decisions, and to follow as he guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Amen. You are now a ruling elder. Congratulations.
God from whom all blessings flow. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Would you turn in your hymnals to hymn number 529, draw us in the Spirit's tether, and we'll sing the first and second verses. Please be seated. <laughs> Jesus Christ the Lord has prepared this table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him as Lord, are invited to this communion table. Let us joyfully offer God our thanks and praise as we take this communion meal. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink. Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, Take, drink. This is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me.
take, drink. Will you please join me in the post-communion prayer? We praise you, God, for this heavenly banquet that you have so freely given us. Thank you that we carry in our hearts the riches of this eternal goodness. May we pour it out wherever we go, lighting up the darkness with truth, offering hope where there is despair, and weaving your unconditional love into all we do. Send us now in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. May we live to be all that you have destined us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you stand, please, and sing the third verse of hymn number 529, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether. of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. <laughs>